Hello, my name is Megan Fink and I am a teacher over at BLC for Eastern Suffolk BOCES. Today I'm just going to walk you through step by step how to view your reports within Nearpod if you run a Nearpod activity. So I generally use Google Chrome. I pulled up my Nearpod homepage. I want, just want to show you what will happen if you have a, an activity that no students have completed yet. So the steps you will follow in order to access the reports are to hover over the activity and then look at these three circles in the top right corner, click those, and then reports will come up as an option. So when I click reports for this activity, no one has done this activity yet, so it says no data to report. But I'm going to go back to my home page, and I keep my things pretty organized. So I have here the week of 3.30. And this morning I had my, I walked my students through step by step how to do this activity. So I'm going to hover over this. Again, hover over the three dots and click. And then move to reports. So notice it does not say no data to report. So for each time that I give a new code, it'll come up separately here. And I'm clicking. I have a session and one student did it. Realistically, that student was only me but I can click here. All right, this shows me off the bat, making it a little bigger, that myself, I participated on 100% of the activities. So that's just the participation. Now, if I had different types of activities that I could scroll through, this was a draw it activity. So I can actually look at each thing that I drew. So this button here enabled me to expand my view and I can actually look at the drawing. Okay, one way to look at the drawing is to actually hit downloads, and then I can do a PDF of the student view. I can select which students I want to look at. This is really helpful if you're looking for specific data on I, for IEPs and tracking goals. So I'm just going to select myself as the only student, and I can just save it to my computer. Now, as I access it, this shows me the students' drawings. There is another view, which I'll show you in a second, where you can view them bigger. But this shows me, and I can zoom in to see what the student drew. So the student, myself, counted the number of items and added correctly, and then counted the number of items and subtracted correctly. So that's one way to view it. And another would be to go to Downloads, and then this CSV Student View. I'm going to make sure just the students I want are selected. And I like to save it to the computer rather than my Google Drive, but that's another option. So because they're separate files, then I do need to be able to extract it from a zip. But another option would be to access it by going to my folders and then viewing it from downloads. And this is what I just downloaded. So now that I've opened my zip drive, my compressed file, I can right click over each image that I want to save. And I want to extract it to a specified folder. I'm going to save it under distance learning for myself. As well as the other one, which I could also do more than one at once by selecting one and hitting my control button while holding it down and then again extracting them to a folder. Now if I go to that folder to view it, I can actually view each image separately. So this is excellent data to have if I have an IEP meeting or if I'm tracking goals or I really want to see an individual student's progress if they're struggling. 
So this is how to view each individual draw activity. Thank you and I hope that this is helpful.